Okay. Um, hey, I'll be on um, national TV again. This will be the eighth time. You ever seen the show House Hunters? Okay, we've been, this will be the eighth time that they've, they've, they've shown it. Um, it's uh, Saturday, November 8th, 9 p.m. Central Time. Kind of cool. Uh, I helped a couple buy a house in Round Rock. It's also hidden on my website because HGTV doesn't let me just post it on my website. But if you want to see the shows, I'll show you the YouTube clips. Uh, or I'll get you a DVD if you'd like to see, see the shows. But it's pretty fun because it shows two different shows, one showing a million dollar house, the other one showing a quarter million dollar house. Okay. All right, this is all about trust. Uh, and the reason I'm able to do this at the credit union is they trust me. And after so many years uh, that we've been doing these seminars, um, they keep inviting me back so that I can give you great new updated information to put you guys in the forefront. Plus, Amplify wants to be your place of banking like it already probably is. Uh, but they want to establish a relationship of, uh, of being able to work with you on other aspects. They have a financial planning division. They have the loan department. It's not just a place to deposit your money. Um, truth is the basis of professional respect, mutual respect for where we're going, understanding what your needs are and being able to help help uh, uh, clarify that. And when you get past those three levels, you get to the point of security where you're actually able to give me your real personal information to get you to the level of tethering. And what I mean by tethering is where you'll throw out the rope to somebody else and say, hey, if you're gonna buy a piece of real estate, you gotta use this guy. That's the level that I wanna get to with you guys. All right, now what we have, what I offer in return is what I call a trusted advisor, partner, or professional network, okay? Now, it took me 25 years to get this network put together, and me as a realtor and a former mortgage company owner and, a, um, and an investor myself, I put together this team of people, kind of like that Verizon commercial, that you, know, you talk to your realtor, but who's behind them? We have a team of people, CPAs, people, CPAs, attorneys, bankers, lenders, title companies, inspectors, property managers, insurance companies, financial planners, private money lenders, commercial brokers, architects, builders, and believe it or not, other brokers. Okay, because I actually refer business to the experts that, that are in their field, kind of like a doctor who has a specialist in the field. Okay, if he's if he's a specialist and he knows your problem, he may send you over to another specialist that is an expert in that particular area. Maybe it's a retirement home you're going to buy in Sun City. I may not be that expert for that, but I will find the expert for you, and then I refer them, and they gladly pay me a referral fee for doing that. Okay, so um, what you get with me is that team of people behind you. All right, qué pasó? Does that right? Does anybody speak Spanish? Is that? What's that? Is that what, what happened, or is what's happening? Okay, que pasa, que pasa. Okay, I, I did this late last night, so. Um, <laughs> so, what the heck happened? <laughs> and what's next? Stay tuned, but what I mean by stay tuned is don't stay tuned to the news media. Stay tuned to your trusted advisor professionals and know and knows what's going on that is in the trenches, in your micro and your macro markets. Okay, don't trust the news media. It's... It, 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 they get paid. If it, if it bleeds, it bleeds. Just, <laughs> just don't, don't do it. It's, it's depressing, and it bless you. It's depressing, and it doesn't do you any good. Okay, because this is what they would tell you: economic crisis, turmoil, doom and gloom. Wall Street hits Main Street in the gut. Stocks are tagged worthless. 401ks are gutter balls. Real estate has gone down the tubes. Government bailout. What bailout? Panic in the streets. The sky is falling. Or what's real? An inevitable historical correction creating unprecedented economic opportunities of a lifetime for those in position to capitalize on them. An opportunity to buy assets at huge discounts. A time to invest in your, fu in your future. Engage in this. This is not a time to run in fear. This is a time to engage in opportunities. And what I mean by position yourself is you've got to position your mind to that you're going to be an opportunist, not an alarmist. Okay, if you don't believe me, we'll take it from this guy. Don't let the media spin you. They'll spin you around until you freeze. And that's what happens with, the, with, the, with what's going on. People take all the money out of the mutual funds, put it in the bank, they put it in that like credit union, store it in the, the U.S. Treasury. But so there's a lot of misinformation. Here's the quote from the man. Be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. 
Fears regarding the long-term prosperity of the nation's many sound companies makes no sense. Uh, and waiting for the comfort of good news, they are ignoring Wayne Gretzky's advice. I skate to where the puck is going, not to where it's been. And that was a newsletter that came out yesterday from who? Warren Buffett, the, one of the richest guys in the entire world. He is buying up stocks left and right. Okay? This is a buyer's market. Everybody's selling. That's the time to buy. Okay? Same thing with real estate. All right, so you want to know what happened. In the late 90s, we started off with Wall Street packaging auto loans at high yields, okay? Uh, subprime auto loans. I, I know that credit unions have, you know, all the people, they're big on auto loans, and so people were buying cars. And, well, the, the home lenders looked at that and go, wow, look at those high yields they're paying to their investors. Let's, let's, let's tie that to home mortgages. So they created, uh, subprimes have been around for a long time, but then a whole market of subprimes came around. High yields, <clears throat> started attracting more investors, more people like you to say, hey, I'm tired of the 2 or 3% or 1% I'm getting in my, in my checking account. I've got to find the yield. Where do I go? And then you get all the financial planners and going, and, okay, well, let's put it into this, mutual funds, uh, mortgage-backed securities. There's all kinds of different uh, areas to put it. But those high yields were starting to attract investors. What ended up happening was too much good money was chasing high, high yields, too much safe money. Late 90s, there was also a push from the from the government, really, uh, for everyone to buy homes. It creates economic stimulus. It keeps keeps a, everybody should own a home. Well, the problem was it's not everybody should have owned a home. Some people need to remain renters until they get their credit in good enough shape, or they get their savings in a good enough shape, uh, and and work so that they can then buy a home and not lose it. Okay, but they said no. Everybody, cheap, easy money. Go buy homes. Okay, Fannie, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Those are the the big backers, the trillion dollar backers of all our mortgages, who you now own, you, the government, we now own Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, thank you very much. Okay? Fannie Mae, they had to go into competition with subprime. Okay? So they go into competition with subprime. Uh, home ownership reaches 68 to 70 percent. Okay? Now, uh, the norm since the 1930s was 62 to 65 percent. That's that equilibrium where it should remain. Uh, well, not should. I mean, I, I'm all about getting people into home ownership when the time is right. Okay, um, but when it got to 68 to 70 percent, because they pushed people that really weren't ready and didn't have reserves, and pushed them into these. They, they gave them money. Here you go. But they gave them money that was dangerous money, resetting at higher interest rates and all kinds of stuff. Okay, so more capital started chasing that money. Wow, we like these high yields a lot better than leaving the money and st sticking it in a bank account. Let's mortgage-backed securities, big companies, insurance companies started buying up these mortgage-backed securities. Okay, more capital chasing high rates, high-risk loans packaged with good loans, then insured and sold, insured, and then sold as safe investments. So a portfolio loans might like this, 100 loans from mortgages from people buying houses, and 80% um, of them were really good loans, like yours and mine, okay? The other 20% were marginal, the very few were really dangerous, okay? But they packaged them all up, insured them, and called them safe investments. And everybody from here to Wall Street bought off on it. 